Hi everyone, Jordan from Entech here. In a previous episode, we covered some of the calculations that you can do before setting up a pixel system to account for voltage drop. In today's episode, we're going to cover different dual power injection layouts so that we can help you reduce cabling distances and clutter. We've learnt in the last couple of videos that dual power injection involves splitting off from one power supply to inject power at the start and end of each pixel strip. In previous episodes, we've demonstrated that voltage drop not only affects pixel tape, but also affects sections of cable, which means we need to use thicker cable with lower resistance to inject power over longer distances. Today we're going to cover different ways that you can lay out your pixel strips, power supplies and controllers to reduce the cabling distance between each. For today's controller, we're going to use a personal favourite of mine, the Entech Pixel Octo. The Octo has a data output format of two four universe outputs. To give you some context, that means that each output could control up to 11.3 metres of 5 volt RGB tape, which is 60 pixels per metre, or 25 metres of 12 volt RGBW tape, which is 20 pixels per metre. When you have a controller that runs as many universes of pixels as our Octo here, you're more likely to run into power limitations rather than the data limitations of the controller itself. In today's scenario, we'll be covering a 25 meter stretch of 12 volt pixel tape. If we put our controller at the very start of the strip, this is what our layout is gonna look like for a simple dual power injection. You'll notice there is no separate power supply powering the Octo. This is because the Octo is able to be back powered from the tape via the ground and VCC connection. In this scenario, you would need to use over 25 meters of cable to get from your power supply at the start of your pixel strip all the way to the second power injection at the back of the pixel strip. Now, we can use really thick cables to achieve this, but in reality, we'd likely be using a five AWG cable, which to be honest, is pretty hard to find, likely very cumbersome and very costly. This is not to mention that the installation guide for this tape recommends a maximum of 15 meters with dual power injection. So you would actually need another power injection in the middle like this. Another option could be to hide the Octo controller behind the wall halfway along or use one output to go one direction and the second output to go in another direction. With this option, we have dual power injection in both strips. However, as you can see, the wiring gets complicated. So while it's possible, it may not be the best choice if you have to repeat a setup multiple times like this in an installation. We're also not using the maximum data capacity for each octo output in this particular use case. One way you could set this up is to put the power supply at the center of the strip and split the DC power from here and inject the start and end of the tape. This way, you'll have a dual power injection and a run of DC cable that's only 12 to 13 meters instead of 25, letting you use an AWG 8 or 9 cable instead. Again, if we check the installation guide, we can see that there is a recommended maximum of 15 meters. So we should also have a third injection point towards the middle. With the power supply also located in the middle, this is a very short connection. None of the options that we've just shown you are definitively right or definitively wrong. As a lighting designer, it's up to you to make the decisions that best suit your project. Now let's have a look at dense pixel grids where dual power injection might be a more favorable option. Let's say you have a grid made up of four, five meter lengths of pixel strip. If you mount the strips parallel with each other, this is what your system will look like. In this scenario, the data runs from left to write in all strips. You may be able to notice a problem here, which is the data cable has to snake back from the end of the first strip to the start of the second strip. This leads to roughly five meters of cable length between each strip, which is well above the three meter limit we recommend for data runs. What you might want to do instead is to mount them in a method we describe as anti-parallel, so you can reduce the wiring distance between strips. Because the grid is so dense, the power supply is located quite close to most of the strips, letting you perform a dual power injection easily without long cable lengths. Imagination is the limit when it comes to laying out pixel strips, and people are always pushing the limits of designs. 
Now, we're not gonna be able to cover every possible layout, configuration, or design challenge that you'll come across in your own installations. But hopefully, with the tips that we provide you, you'll have different ways of getting around your own project limitations. But for now, that's it for today's video. Like, share, and subscribe if you found it useful. Comment down below if you think there's something that we missed or if you have any questions about today's topic. Make sure to check out our social media pages and stay tuned for more helpful and tech tips.